Hi, I'm Grace, and I'm an Italian-American. I have been studying Italian since I was 12 years old, and I have spent a lot of time in Italy, traveling and experiencing the Italian language and culture. Despite how much I know about Italy and the Italian people, I have never deeply explored my own Italian heritage and where my family came from. For this oral history project, I would like to share the story of how my family came to be. Giuseppe Fiore, my great-grandfather, was born in August of 1895 in Castelpagano, Italy, which is nestled in the hills on the eastern side of the Campania region. In March of 1912, Giuseppe and several friends made the journey from Castelpagano to Naples, which is 130 kilometers of distance. On March 30, 1912, Giuseppe boarded the USS Cedric and arrived at Ellis Island on April 12, 1912. He arrived only three days before the sinking of the Titanic. Giuseppe first spent some time in New York with his half-brother Michele, where he worked as a laborer and helped build Grand Central Station. After some time, he moved to New Haven, Connecticut, where there was a sizable Italian community, and he began to make connections and build a life for himself. It is here that Giuseppe met my great-grandmother, Immacolata, or Maggie Maselli, and began to work as a mason. Maggie was born in December of 1903, in the same small village as my great-grandfather. She came to the United States with her mother and father when she was only three years old, and they settled in New Haven. Giuseppe knew Immacolata's father from the old country, so it was no surprise that Giuseppe and Maggie were to be married. Giuseppe and Maggie were married on January 1, 1922. Maggie was only 18 years old when she married Giuseppe, who was 27 at the time. They had their first child, named Nick, in December of 1922. Pictured here is the wedding announcement from their 50th wedding anniversary in 1972. During their time in the United States, Giuseppe, Maggie, and their family experienced many joys and hardships, socially, economically, and professionally. They had 10 children, one of whom was named Tom and died only after a few days of life. Dolores, their seventh child, is my grandmother. Dolores has many memories of her parents, one strong memory being her strict father and the importance of la bella figura for the family. They were very strict because it was very important. They bring no shame on the family name. So they were very, very strict about how we behaved, not only outside of the house, but because we were a large family. Mm -hmm. Our behavior inside the house was expected to be congenial and... One thing that always remained true to the Fiore family, no matter how near or far everyone traveled, was the core idea of family. Every night, the Fiore family sat down to dinner together. They did not have fancy food because they were poor, but they had each other, which meant everything to Giuseppe as the head of the family. Well, my family, I had four brothers and four sisters and a mother and a father. And the rule in the house was dinner time, supper time. Everybody had to be home at the table before the dinner was served. And it was kind of nice to have a, a large group. I'm used to a large group sitting around the table and everyone contributed about what their activities of the day was, and we had a, lo a large range of age. And But my father, who was so conscious of being an immigrant, wanted to hear what everybody had to say, what happened in their day. So if the conversation got too out of hand, like too many conversations were going on at one time, he would pound the table and tell everybody silenzio and we had to be quiet and then he said one person speak at a time hmm. but um i remember laughing and um it was fun we were a family a family yeah. every and my mother cooked for 11 people every night and we didn't have fancy food and I remember that it was like one pot on the t on the t table and that's we ate out of that pot and if you don't like what was in that pot you ate bread yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. there was no butter yeah yeah <laughs> and um, but I have happy memories of 
Another joy that was especially important to the family was the day that Giuseppe got his American citizenship, on March 31, 1933. Although Dolores told me she does not remember being treated any differently than anyone else because she was Italian, she and her siblings know their father was conscious of that fact and was very proud to become a citizen. But I any... have memories of when my father wanted to become a citizen. <clears throat> he was very proud to be an American, though. Mm -hmm. Very, very proud. Mm -hmm. And he went to night school at Bassett Junior High School, and his teacher was Mrs. Finnegan. And he just, I think he liked the teacher, and he really, really did learn a lot. And I think he then learned how to write also. And I remember when he got his citizenship paper, and he was so proud to get it. And he made me go downtown and buy a black frame to frame it so he could preserve it in that frame. Mm -hmm. And um, I think he, it made him very, mm -hmm. very happy to become an American. A strong aspect of the Italian value system that manifested itself in the Fiore family was the idea of hard work. Dolores's grandparents owned a farm in Connecticut, and all the children were required to work on the farm when they were young. They worked there to support their family financially and to gain life experience, although not all of the Fiori children thought of it that way at the time. And, um, we all learned how to contribute to the working of the household. We all worked on the farm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Our grandparents had a farm, and we had to work on the farm, bring home the money. We never said, I don't want to go, mm -hmm. even though we didn't like to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We, really, we didn't have a was, choice. We did it not was, have it a choice. It was hard work. And it was we hard were hard grandpa work. slaves. <laughs> <laughs> and the sugars were so hot. Well, that, that's another aspect of our background was our grandparents, you know, because of the hard, the hard, the hard lives that they had. And it sort of, like, uh, contributed to some of our growing up, too, because mm -hmm. of... Um, they, they worked very hard to have as farmers, mm -hmm. you know, and so we, we became quite a bit a part of that because we all had to work, as, as Joe said, mm -hmm. you know, it was mandatory that we work mm -hmm. on the farm because um, it was a means of um, mm -hmm. doing something yeah. constructive and also um, not that we made a lot of money and... Uh, uh, but but we, contributed, money, to, we mm -hmm. contributed to the household. We contributed to the, whatever we could to the household. And it was the girls and the boys. And the boys. Oh, yeah. Except for Billy, right? Yeah. Except for Kathy. Oh, Kathy. Kathy. Yeah. And I want to just add right here that as soon as I turned 16, I got a job, so I did not have to go back on the farm ever again. Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't our happier days. They were not happy. I use the word slave, just jokingly. <laughs> actually, it was in favor of mama. Mama had children coming, and a whole house full of kids. It was easier on our mother mm -hmm. that we got shipped up to the yeah. farm. It wasn't it, the money. The money wasn't there. It was just you know the farm was there. Grandpa needed cheap help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Today, the Fiore family has grown far and wide, and we have family members living all over the country. Many of us have had the pleasure of meeting our Italian cousins, descendants from the brother of Giuseppe, so the idea of family and staying connected to those roots still remains a priority even after 100 years of assimilation. Tom Fiore, who is the son of Giuseppe and Maggie's firstborn son, Nick, talks about why family bond is the most important value for the Fiore family. Part of... Part of the reason why we are the type of family we are has to be the fact that grandpa left. I mean, he never saw his parents at the age of 16. I mean, think about that. That's got to do something to you in terms of, you know, emphasizing the importance of family and wanting to, to, to sort of, in a sense, almost replace what he had lost. And, um, and, and, and I think that comes through in the way he, you know, when I was growing up, I mean, we always had a family reunion in August around the time of his birthday. We always got together. I mean, we got together for other, um, holidays and such, but in August, everybody 
on a given Sunday showed up and we all went to Mass at St. Anne's as a family and then we went off for the family reunion. And in the later years, it was up at the lake and it had been a restaurant or some other places before that, I seem to recall. But, but there was sort of this, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't recall other families going to church together and then going off together to spend an afternoon uh, like our family did. Certainly none of my friends where I grew up had any similar experience. Uh, they, again, they didn't have this, this, this uh, driving force in the form of a grandfather who thought that this was important. And Over the course of this project, I have gained a deeper appreciation and understanding of who the Fiores are as a family. Giuseppe left Castel Pagano in 1912 and started a new family, a new life, bringing with it many joys and struggles. Overall, we're a pretty awesome family. I look forward to sharing this story and passing it along to future generations.